So for my next sewing make, I want to make a knit jumpsuit. It's one of the macaws patterns. It has like a rumper on there and then a jumpsuit and it looks like it's really, really simple. So I am going to go to Joann's right now and hopefully find some nice knit fabric to make this jumpsuit in. Okay, so change of plans. I was on my way to Joann Fabrics and I'm passing Hobby Lobby. So I decided I would stop in Hobby Lobby first and see if I can find something in Hobby Lobby. If I don't find anything in Hobby Lobby, then I will head over to Joann Fabrics. So let's go see what's in Hobby Lobby. So there are some very pretty fabrics <laughs> here. However, I don't see anything that I want to make this romper out of. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and go on to Joanne Fabrics and see what I can find there. But there are some pretty things here. Look at these, these are so cute. I like how they have them now in different colors. Pink and blue. That is so, so cute. Okay, let's go look at the fabric. So I figured while I was waiting, I can show you what I decided to pick up. So I decided to pick up this knit fabric right here, which is really, really nice. And then I'm gonna get this knit fabric here. And then I just wanna get some muslin. And I'm not exactly sure between the two of these, which one I will use for the romper. I'm kind of thinking this one because it's not as heavy as this one. And you know, because the romper is sleeveless, I wanna be able to wear it like in the summer. So I'm thinking I might go with the lighter knit fabric. And I'm picking up this thread because when I was making this, what is this, this cape, I didn't have any thread that matched as close as I wanted it to. So I wanted to just add this to my thread little stash at home so I'll have some next time I'm sewing something that's camel. This is the pattern that I am about to be working on. And I'll show you the jumpsuit because you can't really see it on the front. I wanna make this here, but I wanna make, you know, the long version of it. This is the short version that they're calling a romper. Let me see if I can show you up close. And I cut out my fabric. I'm going to use this. And it stretches really well from left to right and the up and down stretch really there is none and 
let me show you the pattern. And that is the front and then the back. And then what's really nice is there are only two pieces. You have your front and your back piece and that is it. These pieces are really, really long. So I ended up folding the pattern piece on the bottom up about a half inch just because I was having a difficult time getting the pattern to fit on the fabric and I purchased exactly what the pattern suggested so it suggests two and five eighths for the extra small which is what I picked up but if I ever make this again I think I'll get maybe you know just a little bit more so I can make sure everything will fit just fine so I started sewing. I did step one where you attach the front to the back. And that's what that looks like. Then I got to step number two and it's telling me that I need to cut elastic out of pattern piece number three. So I guess technically there are three pattern pieces. So I need to go back and cut that out because I didn't do it the first time. Since I'm pulling out my pattern and I'm looking for piece number three, I thought it would be perfect to show you what I did to the pattern to try to get it to fit. So this is where I folded up just a half an inch on both of the legs just so I can try to get the pattern to fit. I also decided to shorten the crotch just a little bit. So I folded up the tissue paper about a half inch here just to kind of make sure that the crotch wouldn't be too long. And I just guessed, so I'm hoping that I guessed okay. I am almost done. This is what I have so far. I just need to hem it and to finish around the armhole edges. And the elastic goes around the neckline in the front and also in the back. And the front and the back look very much alike, so I just put the button here so that I'll know the difference. And this pattern is rated as easy. So I thought step number five may be a little confusing. So what you do, you start out with step number one, you sew your front and your back at the shoulders. So let's pretend that this is the front and this is the back and you sew them together and this is your shoulder seam. So then you have one whole piece here, and then this is what it would look like folded. That's the same thing, but it's just folded in half. So you have your four pieces put together. This one's folded in half, and this one's open. They look alike. Step number five says stitch front and back at side and inner leg. So what that means is you will take this piece, which is this side, and then you're going to put these pieces together and just sew down each inner leg side and then also the long side on the outside. And then you'll slip one inside of the other. So I just wanted to share that because it kind of confused me a little bit. So here is the final look. I really like it. It's very comfortable. The fabric is really, really soft. The only thing is in the back, the V comes down really low. So if I ever make this again, I will have to raise the V up so that the bra won't show because you can clearly see my bra in the back. So I will have to make an adjustment if I ever make this again. But otherwise, I really like it. And it was quick and easy to come together. Okay, so I wanna show you how I would raise the neckline if I make this again. So I measured where I would like the neckline to really stop instead of being so low. So while I had it on, I just kind of reached behind and the best I could, I just kind of drew a spot where 
I would like it to be raised. And it's about two and a half inches. So I just measure from this dot down to the corner. So that's what I got about two and a half inches. And then I'm using this paper called dotted paper and it has lines for letters and numbers in between here. It's just a bunch of different letters and numbers and it just helps you keep your lines straight. You don't have to use this, but that's what I'm using here. So I just wanted to share it with you. And I like it because you can see through the pattern. Once you put your pattern on to the dotted paper, you can see right through it. So what I did is I just taped down my pattern piece to the dotted paper. And I use removable tape because it doesn't tear your paper. You can remove it easily. Next, what I'm going to do is draw a line up from the corner. This is the corner, the low corner, the low V right here. What I want to do is raise it from this point and then blend the line into the neckline area. So I'm just going to draw a line two and a half inches from this corner up. So that's about right here. Then I'm just going to blend this line back into the neckline area. So I'm just putting my ruler here on the point of the line where it stops. And then I'm just going to make sure that this is angled. And then I'm going to draw a line. and have that blend right back into the neckline area. So this will be my new neckline. And so as you can see, instead of the V stopping down here, the V will now be raised up to this point. And then you will just go ahead and cut your new neckline out from there on down and then sew everything up as normal. So I have a good amount of scraps left over and now that this garment is already finished, this is the back, I'm just going to take a piece of my scrap fabric and I'm going to place it behind the V and then I'm going to sew it in and then just raise the V up that way so it won't be so low. So. This is how I am going to fix the back so that I can wear it without the bra showing. So before I go, I want to leave you with a love share. Popeye's fast food restaurant buildings are unique in that on the exterior they have these iron balconies which are a nod to the New Orleans French quarters on Bourbon Street where during Mardi Gras beads are tossed over the balconies.